Hello everyone. In today's message, I want to talk about pushing beyond your limits and achieving extraordinary success. I know many of you may be feeling stuck, frustrated, or even overwhelmed with your current circumstances. You may be wondering how you can break through these barriers and reach your full potential. Well, I have good news for you. You are not alone. We have all been there at some point in our lives. But the difference between those who succeed and those who don't is their ability to push beyond their limits. And that's exactly what I want to share with you today. I have five powerful ways that will help you break through your limitations and achieve extraordinary success. These are strategies that I have personally used and have seen work for countless individuals. So, if you want to turn things around and reach new heights in your life, then I urge you to keep watching. Because by the end of this video, you will have the tools and mindset to push beyond your limits and create the success you desire. So, let's dive in and discover the five ways to push beyond your limits and achieve extraordinary success. Starting with number five, which is taking consistent action. This is a topic that is close to my heart because I have seen firsthand the power of taking consistent action in achieving our goals and dreams. We all have dreams, aspirations, and goals that we want to achieve in our lives, whether it's to start a successful business, travel the world, or make a positive impact in our communities. We all have something that we want to accomplish, but the sad truth is that many of us never reach our full potential because we fail to take consistent action. We live in a world where instant gratification is the norm. We want everything fast and easy. We want success to come knocking on our door without putting in the hard work and dedication. But let me tell you, my friends, success is not a destination. It is a journey. And the key to unlocking the journey is taking consistent action. Consistent action is the secret ingredient that separates the successful from the mediocre. It's what makes the difference between those who achieve their dreams and those who just dream about them. So, what exactly do I mean by taking consistent action? It means showing up every day, putting in the work, and never giving up, no matter how difficult or challenging the journey may be. Think about it. When we start something new, we are full of enthusiasm and motivation. We have a clear vision of what we want to achieve, and we are ready to take on the world. But as time goes on, that initial excitement fades away, and we start to lose our momentum. We get distracted by other things, we make excuses, and we start to doubt ourselves. And before we know it, we have given up on our dreams. But, my friends, this is where taking consistent action comes in. It is during these moments of doubt and uncertainty that we must push ourselves to keep going. We must remind ourselves of our why and the reasons why we started this journey in the first place. We must remember that success is not a straight line. It's a roller coaster ride with ups and downs, twists and turns. And it is during these down moments that our consistent action will carry us through. Consistency is the key to success. It's not about doing something once in a while. It's about doing it every single day. It's about making a commitment to yourself to take action, no matter how small, towards your goals every day. It's about forming habits and routines that will lead you to success. As the saying goes, success is not a one-time event, it's a habit. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, taking consistent action is hard. It requires discipline and sacrifice. And you're absolutely right. It's not easy. But let me ask you this. Is anything worth having easy? The answer is no. Anything worth having in life requires hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. And the reward for taking consistent action far outweighs the temporary discomfort. Let me share with you a personal story. When I first started my career as a motivational speaker, I faced a lot of rejection. I would reach out to hundreds of companies and organizations, and most of them would say no. It was disheartening, and I started to doubt myself and my abilities. But I didn't give up. I kept taking consistent action, reaching out to more and more people every day. And eventually, my hard work paid off. I landed my first speaking gig, and from there, my career took off. But it didn't stop there. I had to continue taking consistent action to grow my business, to improve my skills as a speaker, and to reach more people. And I can tell you that it wasn't always easy. There were days when I felt like giving up. But I reminded myself of my why, and I kept pushing forward. And today, I can proudly say that I have achieved extraordinary success, all because of taking consistent action. 
Now, on to number four. Surrounding yourself with successful people. I know what you're thinking. Jin, how can the people around me have any impact on my success? Well, let me tell you, my friends, the people you surround yourself with have a huge influence on your thoughts, your actions, and your overall mindset. And if you want to achieve extraordinary success, you need to surround yourself with successful people. You see, success is not a solo journey, it's a team effort. And the people you choose to be on your team can make all the difference in the world. So, let me share with you three reasons why surrounding yourself with successful people is crucial for your success. Firstly, successful people have a different mindset. They have a winner's mindset. They believe in themselves and their abilities. They have a positive outlook on life and are not afraid to take risks. And when you surround yourself with such people, their mindset rubs off on you. You start to believe in yourself and your abilities. You start to see opportunities where others see obstacles. And that, my friends, is the first step towards achieving extraordinary success, having the right mindset. Secondly, successful people have a wealth of knowledge and experience. They have been through the ups and downs of life and have come out on top. And when you surround yourself with such people, you have access to their knowledge and experience. You can learn from their mistakes and their successes. You can gain valuable insights and advice that can help you on your journey towards success. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, if you surround yourself with successful people, you are bound to become successful yourself. And finally, successful people are driven and motivated. They have a burning desire to achieve their goals and will stop at nothing to make it happen. When you surround yourself with such people, their drive and motivation will rub off on you. You will be inspired to work harder, to push yourself beyond your limits, and to never give up on your dreams. As the great Zig Ziglar once said, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. And when you surround yourself with successful people, you are helping each other to achieve your goals and dreams. Now, I know that some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't know any successful people. How can I surround myself with them? Well, let me tell you, my friends, that success leaves clues. And if you look closely, you will find successful people all around you. They may be your colleagues, your friends, your family members, or even people in your community. And if you can't find any in your immediate circle, then go out and find them. Attend networking events, join mastermind groups, or even reach out to successful people on social media. The key is to take action and put yourself in the company of successful people. But let me also caution you. Be very selective about the people you choose to surround yourself with. Not everyone who appears successful on the outside is truly successful on the inside. Look for people who have achieved success in all areas of their lives, not just in their careers or finances. Look for people who have a positive attitude, who are generous and kind, and who are always looking to grow and improve themselves. And as you start surrounding yourself with successful people, remember to be a giver, not just a taker. Offer value and support to those around you, and be genuinely interested in their success. Remember, success is a team effort, and the more you give, the more you will receive in return. Now, on to number three, developing a growth mindset. Now, what exactly is a growth mindset? It is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed and improved through hard work, dedication, and a willingness to learn. It is the understanding that our potential is not fixed, but rather, it can be expanded and stretched to new heights. You see, Many of us have been conditioned to believe that our intelligence and abilities are fixed traits. We are either born with them, or we are not. This mindset limits us and holds us back from reaching our full potential. But the truth is, our potential is limitless. We have the power to continuously grow and improve ourselves, both personally and professionally. So, how do we develop a growth mindset? It starts with our thoughts and beliefs. We must first believe that we have the ability to improve and grow. As Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Our thoughts and beliefs shape our actions and ultimately determine our success. Next, we must be willing to step outside of our comfort zone. Growth and comfort cannot coexist. In order to reach new heights, we must be willing to take risks and try new things. This may be scary and uncomfortable, but it is necessary for growth. 
As the saying goes, a comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. We must also be open to feedback and criticism. Difficult for some of us, as we may fear being judged or criticized, but feedback is essential for growth. It allows us to see our blind spots and areas where we can improve. Embrace feedback and use it as a tool for growth rather than taking it personally. Another important aspect of developing a growth mindset is perseverance. We must be willing to face challenges and setbacks head on and not give up when things get tough. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Failure is not the end. It is simply a stepping stone towards success. With a growth mindset, we see failure as an opportunity to learn and improve. We must also surround ourselves with like-minded individuals who also have a growth mindset. The people we surround ourselves with have a big impact on our thoughts and beliefs. Surround yourself with those who inspire and motivate you to grow and push beyond your limits. Now, I must warn you, developing a growth mindset is not an easy task. It takes time, effort, and dedication, but the rewards are immeasurable. With a growth mindset, you will not only achieve extraordinary success, but you will also experience personal growth and fulfillment. So, why is developing a growth mindset so important? Because it is the key to unlocking our full potential and achieving our dreams. It is what separates those who settle for mediocrity from those who strive for greatness. It is what allows us to push beyond our limits and reach new heights of success. As we continue our journey towards personal development, I urge you to adopt a growth mindset. Believe in your ability to grow and improve, step out of your comfort zone, embrace feedback and criticism, persevere through challenges and setbacks, surround yourself with like-minded individuals, and most importantly, never stop learning and growing. Now, coming up on number two, I can confidently say that this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, embracing discomfort. Now, I know what you may be thinking, why on earth would anyone want to embrace discomfort? It sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? We are wired to seek comfort and avoid pain at all costs. But the truth is, discomfort is a necessary ingredient for growth and success. In fact, it is through discomfort that we are able to push beyond our limits and achieve greatness. Think about it, when we are comfortable, we are not challenged. We are not forced to stretch ourselves and try new things. We settle into a routine and become complacent. And that, my friends, is the enemy of progress. It is only when we step out of our comfort zone and embrace discomfort that we are able to truly grow and reach our full potential. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was just starting out in my career, I was comfortable. I had a steady job, a decent salary, and a routine that I was used to. But deep down, I knew that I was capable of so much more. I had big dreams and aspirations, but I was too afraid to take the necessary risks to make them a reality. It wasn't until I embraced discomfort that I was able to break out of my comfort zone and achieve extraordinary success. I took on new challenges, pushed myself to learn new skills, and stepped outside of my comfort zone. And you know what? It was uncomfortable, it was scary, but it was also exhilarating. And it was through that discomfort that I was able to achieve things I never thought possible. You see, discomfort is the catalyst for growth. It forces us to adapt, to learn, and to evolve. It challenges us to think differently, to be creative, and to find new solutions. And it is through this process that we are able to push beyond our limits and achieve extraordinary success. Now, I'm not saying that it's easy. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Embracing discomfort requires courage, determination, and a willingness to fail. But let me tell you, the rewards are worth it. The satisfaction of achieving something that once seemed impossible is indescribable, and the lessons you learn along the way will serve you for a lifetime. But how do we embrace discomfort? How do we push ourselves out of our comfort zone and into the unknown? The first step is to change our mindset. We must shift our perspective and see discomfort as an opportunity rather than a threat. Instead of avoiding it, we must seek it out and embrace it. The second step is to take action. It's not enough to just think about embracing discomfort, we must actually do it. Start small, take on a new challenge or try a new activity that makes you uncomfortable. And as you build your discomfort muscle, you can take on bigger challenges and push yourself even further. 
The third step is to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who also embrace discomfort. They will push you, challenge you, and support you on your journey to success. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, so choose wisely. And finally, never forget the power of perseverance. Embracing discomfort is not a one-time event, it is a continuous process. There will be setbacks, failures, and moments of doubt. But it is through perseverance that we are able to overcome these obstacles and keep moving forward. The discomfort you feel today will be the comfort you feel tomorrow. Let that sink in for a moment. The discomfort you feel today, whether it's in your career, your relationships, or your personal life, will eventually become your new normal. And when that happens, it's time to seek out new challenges and embrace discomfort once again. And now, onto the one you've been waiting for, number one. I have spent decades studying and observing successful individuals, and I can confidently say that there is one common factor that sets them apart from the rest. They set ambitious goals. You see, we are all born with immense potential and capabilities, but it is our goals that give us direction and purpose in life. They push us beyond our limits and challenge us to become the best version of ourselves. Without goals, we are like ships without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, setting goals is easy. I can just write down a list of things I want to achieve and call it a day. But let me tell you, my friends, that is not the way to set goals. Setting goals is an art, and it requires careful thought and planning. So today, I want to share with you the number one way to push beyond your limits and achieve extraordinary success, setting ambitious goals. The first step in setting ambitious goals is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. You must have a burning desire, a deep passion for your goals. It should be something that excites you, something that keeps you up at night, and something that you are willing to work tirelessly for. As the saying goes, if your dreams don't scare you, they are not big enough. Next, you must write down your goals. Writing down your goals is a powerful exercise. It not only helps you clarify your thoughts and ideas, but it also serves as a constant reminder of what you are working towards. I recommend writing your goals in the present tense, as if you have already achieved them. This creates a sense of belief and confidence in your mind, making it easier for you to take action towards your goals. But writing down your goals is not enough. You must also make them specific and measurable. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, say, I want to earn a six-figure income by the end of this year. This makes your goals tangible and gives you a clear target to aim for. The next step is to break down your goals into smaller actionable steps. This is where most people fail. They set big, audacious goals but have no idea how to achieve them. But let me tell you, my friends, success is not achieved overnight. It is the result of consistent daily actions towards your goals. So break down your goals into smaller tasks that you can accomplish each day. This not only makes your goals more manageable, but also gives you a sense of progress and accomplishment as you tick off each task. Now, I want to address a common misconception about setting goals, the fear of failure. Many people are afraid to set ambitious goals because they fear they might fail. But let me tell you, my friends, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of it. Every successful person has faced failures and setbacks on their journey. But the difference between successful and unsuccessful people is that successful people don't let failure stop them. They use it as a learning experience and keep moving forward towards their goals. In fact, I believe that failure is essential for personal growth and development. It teaches us valuable lessons and helps us become stronger and more resilient. So don't be afraid to set ambitious goals because of the fear of failure. Embrace failure as a part of your journey and use it to fuel your determination and drive towards success. Another important aspect of setting ambitious goals is accountability. You must hold yourself accountable for your goals. Share your goals with someone you trust, someone who will hold you accountable and keep you on track. This could be a mentor, a friend, or a family member. Knowing that someone is counting on you to achieve your goals will push you to work harder and stay committed. But most importantly, you must hold yourself accountable. Make a promise to yourself that you will do whatever it takes to achieve your goals. Remember, your goals are your responsibility, and no one else can make them a reality for you. 
It is up to you to take action and make your dreams a reality. Now, as I come to the end of my speech, I want to leave you with a powerful quote by the late, great Zig Ziglar, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. So, my friends, I urge you to set ambitious goals and expect to win. Believe in yourself, and don't let anyone or anything hold you back from achieving your dreams. Are you struggling with bad habits? Do you find yourself constantly stuck in negative patterns, unable to break free? Well, you're not alone. In today's message, I want to share with you five powerful ways to change your bad habits and transform your life. As a motivational speaker and personal development guru, I've witnessed countless individuals successfully turn their lives around by implementing these simple yet effective strategies. I believe that by listening to this message, you too can make a positive change in your life. So, grab a pen and paper, and get ready to take some notes because this is going to be a life-changing journey. Are you ready to say goodbye to your bad habits and hello to a better version of yourself? Let's dive in, starting with number five, change your bad habits by surrounding yourself with positive influences. Now, have you ever heard the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with? Well, I'm here to tell you that this statement holds a lot of truth. The people we surround ourselves with have a significant impact on our thoughts, actions, and ultimately, our habits. Think about it for a moment. Have you ever been in a situation where you were trying to quit a bad habit, but your friends or family members were not supportive? Maybe they even encouraged you to continue with that habit, making it even harder for you to break free from it. On the other hand, have you ever been around someone who is constantly positive, motivated, and focused on personal growth? Did you notice how their energy and mindset influenced you in a positive way? The truth is, the people we surround ourselves with can either lift us up or bring us down. If we want to change our bad habits, we need to be intentional about who we allow into our inner circle. So, let me share with you three reasons why surrounding yourself with positive influences is crucial for changing your bad habits. First and foremost, positive influences can provide us with support and accountability when we are trying to break a bad habit. It can be challenging to do it alone. We may face moments of weakness or doubt, and having someone who believes in us and encourages us can make all the difference. Positive influences can also hold us accountable for our actions and help us stay on track towards our goals. They can remind us of why we want to change our habits and keep us motivated to keep going. Secondly, surrounding ourselves with positive influences can help us develop a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that we can improve and develop ourselves through hard work and dedication. When we are around people who have a growth mindset, it can rub off on us. We start to see challenges as opportunities for growth, and we become more open to learning and trying new things. This mindset shift is crucial when it comes to changing our bad habits. Instead of seeing them as fixed and unchangeable, we start to believe that we have the power to change and improve ourselves. Lastly, positive influences can inspire us to be our best selves. Have you ever been around someone who radiates positivity and motivation? It's contagious, isn't it? When we surround ourselves with people who are constantly striving to be the best version of themselves, it can inspire us to do the same. We start to believe that we are capable of more and we become more motivated to work on ourselves and our habits. Now, I want to be clear that surrounding ourselves with positive influences does not mean cutting out all the negative people in our lives. It's not about being exclusive or judgmental. Instead, it's about being intentional with who we spend our time with and making sure that we have a balance of positive and negative influences. We can still love and care for those who may not have the same mindset as us, but we need to be aware of how their energy and actions may be affecting us. So, how can we surround ourselves with positive influences? First, we can seek out communities or groups of like-minded individuals who are also on a journey of personal growth. These can be in-person meetups, online forums, or even book clubs. Second, we can reach out to mentors or coaches who have achieved what we want to achieve and can guide us on our journey. Lastly, we can be intentional about the people we choose to spend our time with. 
We can choose to spend more time with those who uplift and inspire us and limit our time with those who bring us down. Which leads us to the number four way to change your bad habits. Create a plan. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jim, I've tried to change my habits before, but it never works. How is creating a plan going to make a difference? Well, let me tell you, my friends, a plan is like a roadmap. It gives you direction and guidance towards your desired destination. Without a plan, you are simply wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. But with a plan, you have a clear path to follow, and that makes all the difference. So, how do we create a plan to change our bad habits? Let me break it down for you. Step 1. Identify your bad habits. The first step to changing your bad habits is to identify them. Take a moment to reflect on your daily routine and write down all the habits that you know are holding you back. It could be something as simple as hitting the snooze button every morning or something more serious like smoking or overeating. Whatever it may be, be honest with yourself and make a list. Step 2. Understand the root cause. Once you have identified your bad habits, it's time to dig deeper and understand why you have them in the first place. Our habits are often a result of our thoughts and beliefs. So, ask yourself, what belief or thought is driving this habit? Is it a coping mechanism for stress? Is it a way to seek comfort? Understanding the root cause will help you address the underlying issue and make it easier to change the habit. Step 3. Set a specific goal. Now that you know what habits you want to change and why you have them, it's time to set a specific goal. Your goal should be clear, measurable, and achievable. For example, instead of saying, I want to stop procrastinating, set a specific goal like, I will complete my work before 5 p.m. every day. This will give you a clear target to work towards and keep you motivated. Step 4. Create a plan of action. This is the most crucial step in changing your bad habits. You need to create a plan of action that will help you achieve your goal. Write down the steps you need to take to change your habit. For example, if your goal is to stop smoking, your plan of action could include steps like finding a support group, replacing smoking with a healthier habit, and avoiding triggers that make you want to smoke. Having a plan in place will make it easier for you to stay on track and make progress. Step 5. Stay committed and accountable. Changing habits is not an easy task. It requires dedication and consistency. So, it's important to stay committed to your goal and hold yourself accountable. One way to do this is by tracking your progress. Keep a journal or use a habit tracking app to monitor your daily actions. This will help you stay motivated and see how far you've come. Step 6. Be patient and kind to yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither are new habits. Changing habits takes time, and it's important to be patient with yourself. Don't beat yourself up if you slip up or have a bad day. Instead, be kind to yourself and remember that it's all part of the process. Stay focused on your goal and keep moving forward. Which leads us to number three. Change your bad habits by replacing the habit with a positive activity. So many of us struggle with bad habits that hold us back from reaching our full potential. Whether it's procrastination, overeating, smoking, or any other destructive habit, we all have something we want to change. But the question is, how do we do it? The first step is to identify the bad habit that you want to change. This may seem obvious, but it's crucial to be specific. Instead of saying, I want to stop procrastinating, Say, I want to stop scrolling through social media for hours instead of working on my goals. This will help you have a clear focus and a specific action to replace. Now, once you have identified your bad habit, it's time to replace it with a positive activity. The key here is to find something that will bring you joy and fulfillment. It could be a new hobby, a physical activity, or even a new skill you want to learn. The important thing is that it should be something that you genuinely enjoy doing. For example, if your bad habit is overeating, you could replace it with a physical activity like jogging or yoga. Not only will this help you burn calories, but it will also release endorphins, which will make you feel good and reduce your cravings for unhealthy food. Or if you want to stop procrastinating, 
You could replace it with a new hobby like painting or playing an instrument. These activities will not only be enjoyable, but they will also help you develop new skills and boost your creativity. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have time for a new activity. I'm already so busy with work and family. My answer to that is, make time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, and it's up to us to prioritize and manage our time effectively. Instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media or watching TV, use that time to engage in a positive activity that will bring you closer to your goals. Another important aspect of replacing bad habits with positive activities is to have a strong why behind it. Ask yourself, why do I want to change this habit? What will it bring to my life? Having a strong reason will give you the motivation and determination to stick to your new positive activity. Maybe you want to be healthier for your family, or you want to improve your productivity to advance in your career. Whatever your reason may be, hold on to it and let it fuel your actions. Now, I want to address something that often holds us back from changing our bad habits. Fear of failure. We are afraid to try something new because we fear that we may not be good at it. But let me tell you, failure is a part of the journey to success. We all have to start somewhere, and it's through trial and error that we learn and grow. So, don't let fear stop you from replacing your bad habits with positive activities. Embrace the process and trust that with time and effort, you will see the results. Lastly, I want to remind you that changing bad habits is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing process that requires consistency and dedication. Don't beat yourself up if you slip up and fall back into your old habits. Instead, acknowledge it, learn from it, and get back on track. Remember, it's not about being perfect, but about making progress every day. Which leads us to number two. Change your bad habits by setting a goal. Now, you may be wondering, what does setting a goal have to do with changing my bad habits? Well, let me tell you, setting a goal is like setting a destination for your life. It gives you a sense of direction and purpose. And when you have a clear goal in mind, it becomes easier to identify and eliminate the bad habits that are holding you back from achieving that goal. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a goal to lose 20 pounds in the next six months. Now, if you have the habit of eating unhealthy food and not exercising regularly, do you think you will be able to achieve that goal? Of course not. In order to reach your goal, you will have to change your bad habits of eating unhealthy food and not exercising and instead develop the habit of eating nutritious food and working out regularly. You see, setting a goal not only gives you a clear direction, but it also motivates you to take action. When you have a goal in mind, you are more likely to make conscious decisions that align with that goal. And when you consistently make those decisions, they eventually become habits. Now, let me share with you the three steps to effectively change your bad habits by setting a goal. Step 1. Identify your goal. The first step is to identify your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Is it to improve your health, advance in your career, or enhance your relationships? Whatever it may be, make sure it is a goal that truly excites and motivates you. It should be something that you are passionate about and willing to work hard for. Step 2. Break it down into smaller goals. Once you have identified your main goal, the next step is to break it down into smaller, achievable goals. This will not only make your goals seem more attainable, but it will also help you track your progress and stay motivated. Going back to our previous example, if your main goal is to lose 20 pounds in six months, you can break it down into smaller goals of losing three to four pounds per month. This will make it easier for you to focus on one step at a time and celebrate your achievements along the way. Step 3. Develop new habits. The final step is to develop new habits that align with your goal. This is where the real work begins. You must be willing to let go of your bad habits and replace them with new, positive ones. And remember, it takes time and effort to develop a new habit. So be patient with yourself and stay committed to your goal. Now, I want to share with you a powerful technique that will help you develop new habits more effectively. It's called the habit loop. The habit loop consists of three parts, 
The cue, the routine, and the reward. The cue is the trigger that reminds you to perform a certain behavior. The routine is the actual behavior, and the reward is the positive feeling you get after completing the behavior. By understanding and manipulating the habit loop, you can create new, positive habits that will help you reach your goal. Which leads us to number one. Change your bad habits by identifying the habit. Now, you may be wondering, how do we identify our bad habits? The first step is to be honest with ourselves. We often tend to make excuses for our bad habits, blaming external factors or justifying them in some way. But the truth is, we are responsible for our habits, and only we can change them. So, take a moment to reflect on your daily routine and identify the habits that are not serving you well. Once you have identified your bad habits, the next step is to understand where you have them. Our habits are a result of our thoughts, beliefs, and actions. For example, if you have the habit of procrastinating, it could be because you believe that you work better under pressure or that the task is too overwhelming. By understanding the root cause of your habits, you can start to challenge those beliefs and replace them with more positive ones. Here comes the most crucial step which is to replace your bad habits with good ones. It's not enough to simply stop a bad habit. You need to replace it with a good one. Our brains are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So, if you try to eliminate a bad habit without replacing it with a good one, you will feel a void, and your brain will try to fill it with another bad habit. For example, if you have the habit of stress eating, Instead of trying to stop it altogether, replace it with a healthier coping mechanism like going for a walk or practicing deep breathing. Changing your habits takes time and effort. It's not something that can be done overnight. It requires discipline, consistency, and patience. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, and the same goes for our habits. It takes small daily actions to create lasting change. So, be patient with yourself and celebrate even the smallest victories. Another crucial aspect of changing your bad habits is accountability. It's easy to slip back into old habits when no one is watching. That's why it's essential to have someone or a group of people who can hold you accountable. It could be a friend, a family member, or a coach. Share your goals and progress with them, and they can provide you with the support and encouragement you need to stay on track. Lastly, I want to leave you with this thought. Our habits not only affect us but also those around us. As a parent, your habits can influence your children's habits. As a leader, your habits can impact your team's habits. So, by changing your bad habits, you are not only improving your life but also the lives of those around you. Changing your bad habits starts with identifying the habit. Be honest with yourself, understand the root cause, and replace your bad habits with good ones. It takes time, discipline, and accountability, but the results are worth it. As I always say, motivation is what gets you started, habit is what keeps you going. So, let's make a habit of changing our bad habits and watch our lives transform for the better. Thank you.